Hello, everybody. My name is Tom Karkova, and I am a senior software engineer in the Azure API management team. And I am here to talk about how you can use API management for microservices in a hybrid and multi-cloud world. In the cloud, uh, we have uh, Azure API management, which is a platform as a service for managing your APIs that has three main components, the management plane, the gateway, and the developer portal. In this scenario, all the clients will send their requests to the gateway, which is running in the cloud, which then forwards these requests to the effective backends. These backends can be running uh, in the cloud or somewhere else. So then the requests go outside of Azure to those destinations, which means there needs to be a, a network connectivity, sec security needs to be in place, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. For some customers, however, this is a problem because they cannot send these requests outside of Azure. They cannot open public endpoints to their on-premise services, et cetera. Or maybe you just want to run this gateway in your Kubernetes cluster, for example. So to solve that problem, uh, Azure API management has a self-hosted gateway that basically brings the Azure API management gateway to anywhere. You can run it on your local machine, on-prem, Kubernetes cluster, or even on a ship if you want to. So instead of sending all the requests uh, to the cloud, you can basically run your gateway uh, on your Kubernetes cluster in another cloud. You can run it on Docker Swarm, Docker Compose, uh, or on-premises next to your on-prem applications. You can also obviously run it uh, in Azure on Kubernetes or any container host so that the gateway runs close to your applications. However, there is one caveat. That gateway needs to have cloud connectivity, which is an outbound connection to get the configuration because it uses a cloud control plane. But basically, you can bring the heart of Azure API management where you need it. Uh, as I mentioned, it is a Docker container, which is Linux-based and is available uh, in the Microsoft Container Registry. It is an equivalent, equivalent of the managed gateway. There are some uh, caveats or some features that are in the self-hosted and not in managed, which I will come back to later, but you can find all of this in our documentation. Uh, it is a federated solution, as I mentioned, so you need to connect it to the cloud to get the configuration. But if you lose the connectivity, the gateway will still run. Even after days, it will still run. Uh, so it is not that you uh, are forced to have that connection. It is just that you will run an outdated uh, version. Because it is a container, it's very simple to get it running, to try. You can also use it in your inner loop to test APIs going through API management, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, let's use a demo where I will show you how easy it is to use the self-hosted gateway to uh, spin up the gateway and serve your APIs uh, locally. So in this case, I have here a container running, which is uh, my bacon API, which is exposing ports uh, on my local machine. So if I use Postman, I can send requests to the service. And you can see I get five different flavors of bacon back. Very complex API. So what we'll do now is uh, we will deploy the self-hosted gateway on my machine, and we will send requests to it, which will then be forwarded to this uh, Docker image on my machine. So for starters, I will go to my API management instance, and you can do this. Uh, you can use self-hosted gateway in the developer SKU or premium SKU. And on the left, you can scroll down to what is called gateways. So these gateways are uh, basically self-hosted gateways that you can deploy. And I pre-created this APIs in action gateway. And you can see I did some testing this morning uh, where you can see the metrics for this gateway, how many requests were sent, how long did the backend take, uh, basically the same metrics you get for the managed gateway. 
you can find here a link to the configuration API that is used for the gateway to get the connect to get the configuration. And in this deploy tab, you can basically see uh, how to connect. So for example, you can use the uh, Docker Kubernetes or Helm scripts to get started and uh, get your gateway up and running. So in my case, I will use Docker. And uh, the important piece here is that you will add the, uh, the endpoint of the configuration API as an, a variable. And then we will use the gateway token authentication to connect to the cloud. You can also use Entra authentication if you want, but for sake of demo, I will use this uh, configuration here. So I have a local file with these environment variables, and I will now start the self hosted gateway locally. So I will use some port forwarding. I give it a name. I use it. I add it to my local Docker network. I pass it with the environments that I copied, and then I am using the latest version of the gateway. So when I enter, this gateway is now starting up. And you can see the logs of this gateway. It is basically starting up. And now the tenant has started, which means it's ready to uh, receive requests. So uh, first of all, in the cloud, you need to define which APIs need to be exposed. So in this case, I want to expose the bacon API. I click select, and this API is now allowed to be called. When I go back to the gateway, you can see that uh, eventually this one will receive the change from the cloud because it is polling for changes. And it now has exposed the bacon API on the gateway. So when I go to Postman, and I now send a request to this self hosted gateway for the same URI as the cloud, and I add my subscription key, I can now send a request and get the same bacon back. If we go back to the logs here, we will also see what the gateway does and also see that it logged the request. You see here that the original endpoint that I called was this one. And then the backend URL was this one, which is the uh, endpoint of the uh, Bacon API on my machine. So very simple demo. You can deploy self hosted Gateway. You can expose a REST API. Uh, but basically, uh, it supports multiple. So we support SOAP, WebSockets, GraphQL. And this is uh, an example of a difference. Salesforce Gateway also supports gRPC APIs, which is not supported in the Cloud Gateway today. So let's have a look at that. So I have here a proto file, uh, which is used for gRPC services, also to get bacon, which uh, you can use in API management. So if I go to APIs, you can select gRPC here and you can upload your schema. You can then fill in the server URL, etc., cetera, uh, which I have already done, uh, which then eventually gives you a gRPC API with my operation here. So I have here also a .NET app that is basically a, a gRPC client that which will use uh, the self hosted gateway running locally on uh, port 8801. And because I'm running locally, I will allow insecure server certificate. And then I basically imported the uh, proto spec and I am creating a bacon client based on that proto spec. I'm also adding my subscription key and I am requesting bacon through the generated client. Uh, which I will now run. So what will happen is it will send 10 requests and those 10 requests, uh, let me zoom that a bit. So those 10 requests uh, will be sent to the self hosted gateway uh, by using gRPC. Oops. So if we go to the logs here, we can also see uh, that we're calling this gRPC endpoint, and that we are using HTTP2, which is used by gRPC. 
So also very simple, import Protoss back, allow it to be exposed on the self -Fosse gateway, and you can just consume it. But there's more. On uh, gRPC APIs, uh, you can also apply policies like any other. So for example, uh, I've sent 10 requests, but let's imagine we want to apply rate limiting. I can just apply the same policy. So I can go back here uh, and apply the policy to rate limit uh, and only allow five calls in five seconds. So let me sense it. let me save that. And then uh, in the logs, you will also see this change being reflected. So here you see that on this API, the policy was applied. So in this case, we saw that we had 10 successful requests. If we run the same app now, we will also see again that uh, we are able to use gRPC as a communication, but the gateway will basically start throttling your requests. So same experience for defining APIs, same experience for defining protocol, uh, sorry, policies, but now with gRPC as well. We support all communication types, uh, bidirectional, not bidirectional. Uh, we support all of them. And that's it. So easily run the gateway locally, expose all these API types, and serve the traffic to your local uh, applications. So let's go back to the slides and have a look at some of the scenarios that customers are using. Of course, this comes with a shared responsibility. Uh, we offer this configuration API and the gateway, but in the end, this is a self-hosted gateway, which means you are responsible for things as well. For starters, we uh, are a managed service. We offer an SLA, which includes the configuration API uh, and the ability for you to monitor in the cloud. Uh, so in the portal, which I did not show, you can also see how many connected gateways you have, what the heartbeats are, et cetera. And of course, uh, we patch bugs for the gateway and also uh, give you security patches, et cetera. However, for customers, it is up to you to host the gateway properly, to operate it, make sure your network is properly configured, uh, and also have the line of sight uh, with the cloud for the connectivity. And while we offer new versions of the gateway, it is also up to customers to make sure they run on the latest version, have those security patches, etc. So to look at some of the common scenarios, uh, we see customers use uh, the cloud gateway of API management in front of AKS workloads, um, which means those AKS workloads need to be exposed. Uh, for example, could be with load balancers or other ingresses. But with the self-hosted gateway, you can basically change that and run our gateway with all of its uh, features and API management capabilities inside your cluster and use it as your central, play, central point of communication, but also use that for service-to-service -service communication so you can decouple them. This can be important, for a, for example, if you have migrations and you have on-premise services you want to uh, migrate off of, you can put our API gateway in front and use that as an abstraction layer so that once you start introducing your next generation services, you can start uh, load balancing that traffic to eventually uh, remove that legacy system. And of course, uh, Azure Container Apps is a, a very nice service, a platform as a service for containers. Uh, there also, you can use API management inside your uh, inside the app environment as in public ingress, and then distribute the requests to your applications. And it also works with Dapper. So if you use Dapper on Azure Container Apps, you can also use policies to interact with these. So uh, to summarize, why do customers use self-hosted gateways? There's a variety of reasons, but I tried to summarize them in four, four pieces. First of all, uh, multi-cloud scenarios and run anywhere where customers uh, cannot always use the cloud or they want to use multiple clouds. Uh, they can now use a unified management and operational experience but bring the gateway closer to where it needs to run. 
Second is Kubernetes. Some companies basically standardize on Kubernetes, so everything needs to be deployed on Kubernetes or running inside of Kubernetes. But also, if all the applications run inside a Kubernetes cluster, why send all the traffic outside the cluster to bring it back in? Instead, you can bring uh, the gateway to that cluster uh, so that you do not have to open up any endpoints in your cluster. Some customers like platform as a service, but they cannot always use it because they need more flexibility and control. They want to be in charge of when are we upgrading the gateway. Uh, we want to have our own auto scaling, local connectivity to the back end, et cetera, et cetera. You have more control, but you also have more responsibilities to take care of. And then lastly, uh, Southwest Gateway offers uh, more cloud native capabilities as well. So we just saw the public preview of gRPC. Uh, it also supports HTTP2 uh, end to end, so both for clients and backends, Dapper integration, open telemetry metrics, and more. And if you go to this aka.ms link, you can basically see a nice comparison between self hosted gateway, managed gateway, and our consumption gateway, and how they are different from each other and how much overlap there is as well. So we strive to to have like a full parity, uh, but that is not always possible. So thank you very much for joining. I hope you've uh, learned how you can use Southwest the Gateway and bring the gateway anywhere and uh, hope to hear you use it and how we can improve. Thank you.